Okay, in this video, I'd like to continue on with my tutorials on vector calculus for electromagnetism. This is video number 15, and I'm going to discuss the general vector identities for grad, div, and curl. I'd like to draw your attention to my website, universityphysicstutorials.com. So, the content of this probably should be on a PDF, and I'm hoping to add this to my website as a PDF. But for the moment, that I'm going to leave it in video form. So the point of this is that when you're proving, or when I will say, when I was proving the uh, the product and quotient rules for uh, grad div and curl myself, I found it difficult because you could make a typographical error very, very easily, and I found it very difficult online, for example, to find a resource that had all the particular, um, you know, dot products or cross products or whatever done out explicitly. So what I'm going to do is do out the dot products and so on explicitly and we can refer to them if required. So I don't expect to get many hits on this particular video. It's there, I suppose, for completeness uh, for those that are doing the proofs themselves. So let's sh show you some of those and you're probably going, wow, that's, uh, that's, that, that's a lot of stuff. But well, it's not that difficult. Like I said, it's more of a, it's, it's more of a reference than anything else. So, um, the start with the curls. I'm taking the curl of a vector field A. I'm sure you know how to do that. If you don't, go look at my video number three where I showed you how to compute the curl. But the important point to note here is that it is a curl of a vector field gives you back a vector field, I hat, J hat, K hat components. That is important. It's in contrast to taking the divergence of a vector field where you get back a scalar. Note, by the way, I've just for, for completeness, I've noted exactly what I've defined my A uh, vector field to be. A sub x in the i hat, A sub y in the j, and A sub z in the k hat direction. Then taking the gradient of a scalar field will give you back a vector field. That's very important as well. So a curl gives you a vector field, the divergence gives you a scalar field, but the gradient gives you back a vector field. And note, by the way, I'm taking the gradient of a scalar so A is a scalar, so it doesn't have, it isn't, this, it isn't the vector field A, it's a scalar A, or a scalar field, I suppose, maybe. So next, um, we have the dot product between a vector field A and the nabla. So I'm defining your nabla operator as del del x in the i hat, del del y in the j hat, and del del z in the k hat. Notice, of course, that our dot product picks out a scalar, or gives us back a scalar field. So if a sub x ddx plus a sub y ddy plus a sub z ddz with no components i hat, j hat or k hat. Next, taking the dot product between two vectors, that's pretty straightforward. If you want, you can look at my, my video number two where I discuss the dot product. And now we get to the, the, the ones which I made typographical errors, loads of them, plenty of typographical errors when I was trying to do the product rules myself. So for example here, so I'm taking the, I'm multiplying the vector field a by the scalar fields created by taking the dot product or the divergence of, of, of the vector field B. So the divergence of B is a scalar, and multiplying it by A gives you back a vector field. So I have I hat, J hat, K hat components. Now, um, so just this it's just there for completeness, but notice we have one, two, three, nine components in total. So it can be difficult to make sure that you don't have uh, you don't have typographical errors. And if you want to swap, so you want to have B multiplied by the divergence of A, just swap all the B's and A's um, by symmetry. It's pretty straightforward. So similarly, if you want to take the curl of the, kind of the, the cross product of the curl of B. So notice, by the way, this time there's a minus sign here. That, that's very important. But once again, it's just, there are nine, or this, excuse me, in this case there are 12 terms, and, and it's very easy for you to make a typogra typographical error. So they're all there. I think it's pretty, pretty neat, pretty straightforward. So they're there if you need them. And finally, then, if we take the divergence of the curl, so we're taking the, or not the, excuse me, I keep, um, I keep automatically saying that the dot product is, is the divergence, but it's not. So we're taking the dot product between the vector field A and the vector field produced by the cross product, uh, or the curl of B, we'll say. And this gives us one, two, three four, five, six terms. So they're there for completeness. So what I'm going to do now is prove some of these just, just, just so that we're all singing off the particular same hymn sheet. Okay, so the first one I'm going to do is the... get rid of that as well, just for... we don't need that anymore. So the first one I'm going to do is a 
uh, the, the, the vector field A multiplied by the scalar field produced by the divergence of B. So this here, that's a scalar and this is a vector. So that should give us back a, a, a vector field. So it's pretty straightforward. I'm going to define I'm going to define a is equal to a sub x in the i hat plus a sub y in the j hat plus a sub z in the k hat and something similar for b. So if we take the the divergence of b, it's simply it's simply going to be so we have the divergence of b is going to be equal to del del x b sub x plus del del y b sub y plus del del z b sub z. Okay. Notice, by the way, the order is important. So, like, fine. In quantum mechanics, things don't commute, and generally, in uh, in classical mechanics, thing, things do commute. So, the commutator is equal to zero. But it's very important here that you have the order of your derivatives uh, correct. So, it isn't. So, we're not writing down, for example, b sub x times del del x. That isn't what we're doing, because del del x is our operator, and it's important to know what is actually being, in this case, differentiated. So what we're going to do now is multiply multiply a times the divergence of b. And we're going to get nine components. So we're going to split them up as follows. We're going to get a sub x del del x times b sub x plus a sub x del del x times b sub, uh, excuse me, del del y times b sub y plus a sub x del del z times b sub z. This is going to be in the i hat direction because we're multiplying the three components of a by each of these these three components. Okay, and then we're going to multiply the the y component of a by each of these three components. So in the j hat direction, it's simply going to be a sub y del del x b sub x plus a sub y del del y b sub y plus a sub y del del z b sub z and that's of course in the j hat direction and finally then the in the k hat direction we're going to get a sub z del del x in the times b sub x plus a sub z del del y b sub y plus a sub z del del z b sub z and of course that's very straightforward and very easy but the thing you know that you could make a typographical error on is the order of these and you might also you might also not immediately realize that the actual fact you're going to have nine uh, nine parts or nine components to this so that's that one pretty straightforward of course so if you want to get the if you want to swap between B and A just you just use symmetry the next one I'm going to do is take the the cross product between the vector field A and the curl of B, which is also a vector field. So a vector times a vector, we're going to get back, of course, a vector. So the curl of B is straightforward. So let's get the curl of B. I've done that in the past. Look at video number three if you don't understand how to take a curl. So it's simply going to be del del y uh, B sub Z minus del del Z B sub Y in the I hat direction minus, and that's very important, uh, we're going to have del del x, I'm going to note that there, del del x b sub z minus b sub, uh, minus, excuse me, del del z b sub x, and that's in the j hat direction, plus del del x b sub y minus del del y b sub x in the k hat direction. Okay, so that's how, they, that's how you take the curl of B. So what we want to do is take the cross product between A and this. So we're trying to get A cross the curl of B. So in order to do this, we need to go to our determinant of our 3 by 3 matrix. So I hat J hat K hat. We have A sub X in the I hat direction, A sub Y in the J, and A sub Z in the K. But here what we have is del del Y, B sub Z, minus del del z b sub y. Now we're going to have we're going to have we'll say this this term here. What I'm going to do for convenience is bring in the minus sign so swap the order of the uh, of the components. I'm sure you can understand that. And finally del del x b 
b sub y minus del, del y b sub x. And what we need to do is take the, the, the determinant of this particular 3 by 3 matrix. Now look, it's very easy to do, so I'm actually only going to do... Look, I will actually, I'll do the full thing. I was, I was kind of hoping not to, but I suppose I'd best do the whole thing. So we're going to get back 12 terms. So we're going to get a sub y del del x uh, times b sub y minus a sub y del del y b sub x minus a sub z del del z b sub x plus a sub z del del x b sub z and this is in the i hat direction and to be honest I'm actually after realizing of course that I've written the whole answer in at the, at the start of the video so just this is just a pretty sim simple cross product so I'm only going to do the i hat direction so what we did was we blocked out everything going through i hat like this and then we take the determinant of the 2 by 2 matrix left over so it's going to be a sub y times this and this minus a sub z times this and this so it's minus, giving us a minus, but a minus times a minus gives us a plus. So that's how you take the curl, or sorry, the cross product between A and the curl of B. Okay, moving along. If I want to take the, uh, this time I'm going to go for B with the dot product of the curl of A. Alright, so we saw what the curl of A was or the curl of B a moment ago. So this time we're talking about the curl of, uh, which one am I going to do? No, I won't do that one. I'll do this one. Just looking at my notes here, I suppose. So I want to take the dot product between A and the curl of B. The curl of B. So I showed you what the curl of B was in the previous video. So very simply, we're going to have A sub A, we're going to have A, a sub X in the I plus A sub Y in the j plus a sub z in the k. And what we're going to do is take the dot product of that with the uh, the i hat component, the j hat component, and the k hat component of the curl of b. Okay, and that's actually pretty easy. And just to give us, let's say the, uh, let's talk about. Oh, by the way, notice of course that this is going to give us a scalar. So when you do this, the answer is going to be a sub x del del y b sub z minus a sub x del del z b sub y minus a sub y del del x b sub z plus a sub y del del z b sub x plus a sub z del del x b sub y minus a sub z del del y b sub x okay and of course this is that's the, that's the whole thing there are no there are no vector components because of course it's a scalar and finally I know I'm pushing on through this quickly but I'm sure it's pretty straightforward what I'm going to do is I'm going to take the uh, the dot product between our vector field a and the nabla and then I'm going to multiply that by the vector field B. Alright, so how do we do this? Well, it's very simply going to be a sub x del del x plus, uh, plus a sub y del del y plus a sub z del del z. That is going to be the, the, the dot product between A and the nabla. Notice, of course, that it is a scalar field. But what we're going to do is multiply by B sub x in the i hat b sub y in the j hat and b sub z in the k hat direction. So what we're going to get back in this case is a vector field. So in the i hat direction it's simply going to be a sub x del del x b sub x plus a sub y del del y b sub y or del del y b sub x excuse me plus a sub z del del z b sub x and that's in the i hat direction and I'm sure you can do the rest by symmetry it's pretty straightforward so that's just to show you how to do them I, I'm not showing you how to do it explicitly because I'm sure if you're the level that you've been acquiring these you can you can do it pretty straightforward yourself so thanks for watching please pass it on to your friends subscribe to my channel and you might also visit universityphysicstorials.com